Hi guys. Hi guys. Um, I'm going to talk about one of my favourite things today. I'm going to talk about planners. Uh, so, as you know, I took part in One Butch Lie and I haven't really kind of like a, done a sum up video of like how it went and changes I'm making and everything else. So I thought I'd kind of do a little bit of that today and just generally talk planners. So, the first one I'm not going to talk too much about because obviously, as we know by now, this thing here, my lovely passion planner, is... Um, a very important part to my routine just for managing everything and I think putting this discovering this sorry discovering this planner was a game changer for me in terms of how I planned in terms of how I suddenly felt a little bit more able to deal with um, the day-to-day -day stuff <coughs> excuse me so that is it's it is a very important planner to me um, I know people comment on size and structure and everything else. I think it's really flexible. The size for me is perfect. As we know, I'm not necessarily a small planner girl. Um, but it is, it is, it's the important one. It's kind of like the keystone to uh, everything. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about that because you've seen quite a lot of that. Then I'm trying something for August. Um... I'm trying to combine my B6 bullet journal and my B6 Traveller's Notebook in a similar way to what I did with my Foxy Fix. So this is my B6 Traveller's Notebook. This is my Foxy Fix, which is looking a little bit slim at the moment because obviously I don't have a bullet journal in there. Um, the way I had this set up was very simple. I had my bullet journal in the middle. I had this at the back, which is a Christmas planner insert because... We discovered last year, if we get to October half term and we haven't even thought about Christmas, that's a bit of a problem. Because at October half term, if the Christmas cards don't get written, they ain't getting written. So I have I got one of these specifically to like record lists of Christmas cards and all those sorts of things um, during the uh, beginning of autumn, which is not that far away now. So that's scary, but that's why that's there. Um, I have my perpetual calendar in the back with birthdays and anniversaries and everything in. And then this is just plain insert that I record notes in, I do pen testing in, I if there's something I know I want to refer to in like four or five months time I put it in here because I know this will still be there and my bullet journal will probably be on the shelf by then. So it's those kind of things get dumped in there. So that was a really nice setup that was working quite well but obviously I've wanted to try a different size. Um, conveniently aided by my husband buying me this gorgeous orange planner for my birthday. And conveniently aided by suddenly Lloyd's term and Scribbles the Matter announcing they were releasing B6 size notebooks. Perfect time. So this is similar but different in terms of setup to my Foxy Fix. So I have my first insert is just like a calendar insert. You can see I've recorded nothing for August. <coughs> Excuse me. But having the calendars there is helpful to refer to. So I have that one. Um... He bought me that one, I think, as one of the presents. So I was like, yeah, I'll use it. This one is... This one is kind of an experiment, kind of not. Um, it's basically, it's a weekly insert dated for the third quarter of the year. Um, I got given one in my selection of inserts from my husband, which I used to try out the size, and I quite enjoyed it. Um, but the main reason I use it is A, to have like an overview of events as I'm running around, but also because the process of putting down stickers is quite nice. And if you get to a certain point and go, well, I've got nothing else to stick, or what am I going to do? Um, then it can go in the, this insert. So this is kind of like, sometimes it's stickers, sometimes it's not. And I really like this week. I just keep opening it up and looking at it and stroking it and thinking, yeah, that's really nice. Um... So it kind of, it is what it is really. Sometimes it's used, sometimes it's not. It's just kind of like a spare one for creative outlet, I would say. Um, you will have noticed this is not strung. Um, that's mainly because I did last week try stringing it, but it was pulling quite a bit on the cover. Um, this is only a soft cover notebook. Um, plus it's also a tiny bit taller so it pulling was quite a big thing so I decided it still fits in there quite nicely like when I put the clothes around so go in there it just won't get strung 
for the time being. Um, I have heard that apparently the Scribbles and the Matter ones are coming out this week and those are hardback and hopefully a bit thicker so I might be able to string it like I would have done in my Foxy. We'll see, we'll see. Um, then I have a brain dump insert, exactly the same purpose as was in my Foxy Fix, exactly the same things going in it, exactly the same style dot grid nothing more than that and then I have an insert for my life planned out just to try and think about um, planning out videos things I want to do and just doing a little bit more um, yeah planning rather than just going oh I feel like doing this which is, tends to be what happens so there we go and as you can see like it does fit in there it's a bit bigger but it does fit quite nicely now this didn't come with a pen loop so I've just got like a binder clip pen loop I got from Etsy I have no idea what shop I got it from so that's my bullet journal so before one but July most of the time it was these two things plus eventually a variation on the work planner now it's kind of these two things so it's the same idea I'm just trying a smaller size B6 is okay, it's alright. Um, I, I definitely do not know what possessed me to try A6 more than once. I don't know why I thought that would have worked for one but July because it clearly didn't. One thing I have done to help make this size work is I have removed um, the journaling and scripture writing that I was doing in my bullet journal because that did take up quite a chunk of time and obviously most of my bullet journals are hardback Leuchterns which are 249 pages. Um, this one is 121 pages in a smaller size, so I thought it wasn't necessarily the best use of the space. So I do just have, as I showed, I think in one of my daily plan videos, a simple um, softback uh, exercise type book from Paper Chase, 8 by 10 inches, um, slightly narrower ruled than some of the ones I've got. Um, it's nice paper because it's from Paper Chase, and that's quite, it's working quite well. So that's come out and that's got its own book, which, you know, I've kind of gone from one book July where I was already using maybe three books to, oh, let's use everything. Um, so, B6, Passion Planner, Journal. Um, my morning pages I'm doing, i am done them all through July. Um, I did do them for most of June. And it's a process I'm really enjoying, so that is just kind of, my, it's a total mind sweep it's just utter garbage but it's a really good way to start the day because you kind of go there oh my word and then it's by the end of it you go right I'm going to do this I'm going to do this I'm going to do this so it's quite a good way to start the day that's obviously very different to my journal which is more sort of memory keeping type stuff so that's the two different things and then I suppose last of all there's this which is a happy planner um this is the agate one I think I've put it on mini discs because I find them more stable and there's still a year full of um, months in this so it's not a problem um, now I in my head the happy planner is the planner that could become the go-to planner for work so backtrack um, background info GDPR came in in May and that has changed the way that I have to plan for work. The way I managed everything was everything being in one place. So I had my bullet journal was very full because I had all my personal stuff, I had all my work stuff. Um, I was getting to the point where I was trying to separate it out more and have like a work bullet journal and a personal bullet journal but there was still some overlap. We now have to be able to shred everything for work. Yeah, sharp intake of breath, um, shredding everything for work. So trying to take a notebook and shred it is a lot of hard work. Whereas taking pages out of this and then putting them back in or taking them out and just shredding them is a lot easier to do. So it seems like a good starting point for work. But... Equally, when I'm at work, I still need to see everything. So, at the moment, I'm kind of, I'm playing around with this still. This isn't necessarily in full swing. Um, I'm kind of setting it up as like a catch-all slash work planner. 
uh, just so I know where everything is. Because there's a lot of things going on as well that we need to kind of, between me and my husband, we need to take better stock of and kind of record so we all know where everything's going on. Um, and he's about to start a new job, so it's kind of quite a good time to go, right, we'll do all of this, we'll go through and make sure we're recording that. We've got all that in one location. So we're getting a little bit better at sort of like home management organisation, partly thanks to me recording everything in pen and paper, which he appreciates and is getting to the point where he might be converting to bullet journaling, but that's a different issue. Um, but equally, knowing all that information whilst I'm at work is also helpful. So this is being played around with. The only problem is that I still like having like a lesson planner. And I did buy a classic sized happy planner on the basis I could have lesson planning pages in the same book as like diary pages, which I need both of at work, let's face it. Um, but that was all before GDPR came in, or we even knew the implications that it would have for us at work, really. So that sat on my shelf, and I'm slightly reluctant to use it. So I'm still playing around with what I'm going to do. So I'm now going to pose a question to everybody who watches my videos and my channels. I did last week a daily plan with me series in this, well, the bullet journal and my passion planner, um, which worked really well because it was the holidays and I had a bit more time to do it. And doing that has actually helped me refine what I want from my planner how I'm likely to plan going forward. It's done a lot to help me cement thoughts in my head when it comes to systems that work. So as much as you guys watch doing them, for me, the process was really good. Um, so I'm gonna propose that I do another series in a work week. Um, so if you would be interested in a plan with me, a daily plan with me series again in the first week of September when I'm back at school before everything gets a little bit crazy and that sort of thing just isn't possible anymore. Um, if you'd like to see that, leave a comment below. Um, it will require a lot more thought because I'll have to see how I can plan the personal and the work and not necessarily go into too much work detail but I think I can do it. The more I think about this idea, the more I think it's possible. So, yeah, that's me talking about planners for... Oh, not as long as I thought. I thought this was going to be much longer than that. We're up to about 12, 13 minutes. I was expecting it to be like 20 by now. Um, that's me talking about planners. As I said, if you want to see like a work week daily plan with me, leave a message in below. Um, if you have any questions or, as always, things that you'd like to see me do in my planners, with my planners, um, again, leave a comment below. Um, and I will be back towards the end of the week with my normal plan with me video, um, possibly using both the bullet journal and the passion planner this week. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, so, yeah, so I'll be back at the end of the week, guys. And in the meantime,